tighten um, the airless sprayer. Well, with the uh, the cap spray turbine with an HVLP, you're going to get a uh, a bit finer, uh, not even just a bit, a much finer finish than you will with an airless sprayer, and you're going to get a lot more control. Uh, one of the other benefits with a, a HVLP versus an airless sprayer too is your transfer efficiency. So how much of the product gets from the gun to the substrate goes way up with an HVLP. I think it's going to be one of those things you're going to have to decide. If I had you know my choice between an airless sprayer and an HVLP, I would rather have both of those units versus you know having something like this. I guess um, this could kind of. You know, this would be an airless sprayer and then give you a, a fine finish using the air assisted with it. But um, it's just something you're going to have to, you know, um, going over and you know, reviewing the Graco GX19 Finish Pro airless sprayer. The sprayer is designed specifically and targeted towards those who are doing wood finishing, who want a fine finish type sprayer that is easily portable and is good for smaller quantities of spraying. So your on-site cabinet work um, or even in shop. 16 is the size of the orifice, which is the hole that it's spraying out of. So the bigger that number, the more paint is able to come out of the hole, basically. So because I'm miss doing a mist coat, obviously I don't have to use it. Personal. Yep. If you want to get into cabinet spraying, I think the, the Titan cap spray, the HVLP system, is by far the best way to paint cabinets. And very, yeah. I mean, it's super portable. Uh, you don't have to do with condensation like you would with a conventional system. Oh. I have watched so many videos on YouTube. Conversion sprayers, HVLP air assisted air I've never heard of those until you guys told me so many different opinions I look at my comments which I greatly appreciate serious painters that have got lots of experience but coming up with different results try to do this try this oh you know check out this brand check out that brand it is great to have so many good options but it's so frustrating do I spend $35 on a tip for my current Graco Airless, which I love. I've had it for a couple decades. I spray drywall with it. I spray siding with it. It puts on a lot of paint. But, you know, it's a siphon, you know, Airless. You put it in your bucket. You know, I buy 40 gallons of paint and go through those buckets and just one after another after another. But when it gets to finish and I want to spray cabinets with paint or with stain or with the finish, I'm dealing with smaller quantities, gallon, quartz. And, you know, you think about all the material you have to prime an airless. You know, you've got to, you've got to prime, you got all that stuff in the hose. There's another one. It's a, a couple of different names for it. I, G, I think a, it's a Graco GX19, I think, or I think in Australia, it's an FF, a fine finish. It's still an airless, but it's got a hopper, so you can go with a little less material, 25-foot hose. But still, if you're dealing with, you know, I, I want a gun, a setup that I can do like my desk where I want to spray the stain, and then I want to put on a couple of coats of finish, and I want to do it all with the same machine. You know, airless just takes too much material, and it blows it all over the place. I haven't tried one of those fine finish tips that was recommended um maybe that would be good for like painting finish on trim where i'm doing a whole house of trim maybe that would be a good option for that but when it comes to painting the cabinets i really want to keep the overspray down if i'm working in like a one of my temporary shops in a garage and i've set up a little tent and I'm spraying doors or you know I, I, maybe the cabinets already mounted and unfinished and i'm spraying them in place and I'm going to mask a little bit, but I don't, you know, I just don't want it going all over the place. You know how airless is our man. It's, you know, um, oh, man, so many good choices. But, you know, I, I really don't mind spending the money now. This is the upfront investment. I've already written it off in my head. If I can get by with a $35 tip, I'll save the money. But. If I have to spend two grand to get the right machine and it's going to work and do the job for decades, then I'd rather do that. And when I listen to the Idaho painter, he talks about 
you know, he tried out the the, the really nice uh, Graco air assisted airless, which is kind of both. So 25, 2600 bucks and you get an airless, which I already have, so I don't really need that. And then you get, but he said, you know, is all the painting he's doing, he would stick, you know, his choice would be a an airless, maybe a less expensive airless that'll do the job. And he mentions the Graco 395. He's got a Titan 440, I think he uses. And then have the 115. And some people said the 105 would be plenty. Um, but again, I don't mind getting the big dog. The 115 is the big one they got. And having the versatility, but then it comes with a little more tweakiness that you sort of have to learn the ins and the outs. And I don't have any problem with an airless. They, they're just easy. Um, the right tip. You know, an extension wand, dial in the pressure, get it far, you know, and then boom, go. And it lays down the paint, somebody following with the roller. And yeah, that stuff's, you know, big jobs like that's pretty easy. You just suit up, you're going to blow material all over the place. Um, but like I said, when I get, when I was doing this stand up desk in the shop down there, I, I got out a, a finish sprayer that I ha have, which just was, you know, and it has air compressor. I think it was a conversion gun even. And maybe because I didn't have a big enough compressor, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. But it was still blowing material all over and I couldn't get it adjusted out. So I ended up putting it on with a brush and it just took forever. Um, I just, I want the control. And if I, if I you know, if I've got to drop two grand into a system, I don't want to go over that. That's kind of my, it's kind of where I've gotten comfortable. It's a lot of money, but I'm thinking about the value over time so i'm just in my mind i'm writing it off over time i don't want to fuss around and get something for a few hundred and then that just be blown money because it doesn't work for me and i've done plenty of that so i want to get it right and man i'm so glad these painters are, are putting this up and that you guys are giving me comments but this is a tough one i'm still leaning toward the titan 115 with a couple of accessories and that's where I'm coming up with my two grand budget. I think I'll be, after I pay sales tax, um, I, I think I'll be just under that amount. But uh, yeah, it's, 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 today is so excellent that you can research and, and, and go on YouTube and real craftsmen that are out there using stuff really talk you through it. And have different opinions, which is great. I've learned that there's no one size fits all or one brand's, one person says, this is the only brand, another person says, this is the only brand. I've sort of, I've got my brand favorites, but I, I, I recognize that that's marketing, that it's really about the use of, of the tool. And, and I'm really comfortable stating my opinion about woodworking tools because I know what works for me. And so I'm really comfortable saying, this is how I work and, and this is the only tool I would choose. And I recognize that there's probably equal tools out there that somebody else would say the same thing about it. But it's, I'm sharing my opinion on what works for me and what, what I've had great success with. Um, but when it comes to sprayers, you know, I, or any tool that, that is in a genre or an area that I don't have a lot of experience... I love that there are other people out there stating their opinions. Um, you know, this is what works for me. And I like the guys that try to be neutral too. Although sometimes I think trying to step around and say, well, you know, this is okay for that. And the wishy-washiness sometimes can be tougher than just somebody being adamant. To, you know, it's almost like I'd rather somebody be adamant about it and really make the case. And then somebody else be adamant about something and make the case. And then I can sort of, you know, see where I fit in the best. Or what's closer to, to my style and even my personality, how I work. So it's, it's a lot of fun uh, figuring this out. I, I still love to see your opinions. I'm going to let you know where I go. And once I make the investment, I'll be doing a lot of tests in the shop. And, you know, before I get out in the field and need to produce with it, I want to know it. I want to I know what pressures and flow rates and tips and all that for the different materials I use when I'm doing stain or clear finishes uh, or, uh, you know, pigmented, like, like as latex. I ramble on, as usual, I talk too much, but I do appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you like these videos, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, 
and you'll know when I put up a new video. Most important, please share the channel with others. I, I still would really like to hit that 100,000 subscriber goal by the end of the year, and it's looking pretty sketchy right now. So if you can share, that'd be great. If you want to use my Amazon channel or my Amazon store, which is in the description down below, Amazon shares just a teeny bit with us without charging you any extra and help support the channel. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.